All right then, gang. So now we're able to track a user's current guess. We allow them to submit a guess by hitting enter and we format that guess into an array of letter objects in this format guess function. And it's in here that we also assign each letter a color as well, either gray, yellow or green. But then we're not really doing anything with that formatted guess yet. So what we need to do is add that formatted guess to the guesses state that we defined at the top of the hook. So to begin with, it's an empty array, but then every time a user submits a new guess and we format that guess, we can then add that guess to the guesses array. So that way we're going to have an array of all the guesses that the user makes and all of those guesses will be formatted in the correct way where each letter has an associated color. And then later on in a React component, we can cycle through these guesses and output them into rows on a grid and colorize them. So we already have the formatted guess after a user submits the guess. It's right here. So now we want to take that guess and add it to the guesses array. But after we've done that, we also want to do a few other things like add one to the turn and reset the current guess state to be an empty string, etc. And we're going to do all of that in the add new guess function that we already created above the handle key up one. So let's invoke that function down here and also pass in as an argument the formatted guess that we got back from the format guess function. And then if we scroll back up, we need to accept the argument into that function as well. Now I'm going to call it formatted guess, but you can call it whatever you want. It doesn't matter. Either way, this value is going to be that array of letter objects. And now we can start to flesh out this function. So the first thing I want to do inside this function is a simple check to see if the current guess, which is just a string of the user guess, is equal to the solution, right? And that's also a string because if those two match, then the user's won. And we need to update the is correct state to be true in that case. So let's say if current guess is triple equal to solution and then open up the curly braces. And if this is the case, we want to set is correct to be true, right? Because they've won the game and we can do something with this value later on. For now, we're just saying this is true and that the user essentially wins the game. The next thing we want to do is add the formatted guess that we take in as an argument to the function to the guesses array. But before we do that, I want to make one quick change to the default value of the guesses array at the top of the hook. So at the minute we say, start this off as an empty array of length zero. But actually, I always want the length of the array to be six because in this game, a user is allowed six guesses to try and find the solution. So we need six rows in the game grid. And this is the array we're going to use later to output those rows in a React component. So there always needs to be six elements inside the array so that we output six rows. So to begin with, I want to change this initial value of an empty array with zero length to be an array of length six. And to do that, I can say inside these square brackets, dot, 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 array, and invoke that, and then pass in six as the length. And what this does is create an array of length six, and it spread those essentially empty elements into our guesses array. So now we start with what will be an array of length six, where each of those six items has an undefined value. But then down inside the add new guess function, when we add a new guess to this array, we can start to change those undefined values to be guesses instead. All right. So let's head back to the add new guess function to do this. So we want to use set guesses to update the guesses array. And this update is going to depend on the previous value of the guesses state. So we need to pass in a function as an argument to return the new state. And inside that function, we can then accept as an argument the previous guesses state. So what we'll do first of all is create a new variable called new guesses and we'll set that equal to be an array and inside that array we're going to spread out the previous guesses which is the current or rather previous state of the guesses array. Now to begin with that's going to be six undefined elements the first time we call this function but later on it could be one or two or three or more guesses and then the rest undefined. And then we want to take this new guesses array and update the correct position in that array to be the formatted guess, right? So what is the correct position? 
Well, it's going to be the value of the turn, which is a piece of state that we already created. Now, this starts off as zero to begin with, and then we're going to add one to it after every turn or guess that the user makes. So down here again, we can pass in the turn state. And to begin with, for the first guess, this is going to be zero. So we're accessing the very first item in the array. Then on the next guess, it will be one, then two, and so forth. So we'll be updating the items in the array one at a time in the correct order after every guess that the user makes. So now we want to set this item in the array to be the formatted guess. And then all we need to do is return the new guesses variable at the end, right? So make sure you set it to be the new formatted guess and then just at the end, return new guesses, right? And then this is going to update the guesses state to be that new array that we return with the new guess added to it. Now, there's actually just a couple more things I want to do inside this add new guess function. Like we said before, we need to add one to the turn. But also what I want to do is I want to add their guess in string format. So the current guess, if you like, because that's the guess they're adding. I want to add that to the history because remember we said that that was going to be a bit like the guesses where we store all of their guesses, but this is going to be string format like this, hello or ninja. Whereas in this one, we're storing each guess as an array of objects. So let me just take that back down to an empty array to begin with. But every time now we add a new guess, we want to update that to add that extra guess to the history. So let's do that first of all, we'll say set history and we need to pass in a function right here because it's gonna depend on the previous history as well. So let's pass that in right here, prev history. And then inside that function, all we really need to do is return a new array and it's gonna take the previous history and spread that out into this new array like so, so everything that's currently inside it. But then also we want to add on one more element, which is the current guess. That's the guess we've just added, right? Remember that's in string format and that's all we need to do. So that's the history updated. We also want to update the turn, so set turn. Again, it's going to depend on the previous state. So we use a function whereby we take in the previous turn, if you like, the prev turn and then down here, we can just return the new turn. Now it's gonna be the previous turn, just plus one. So if it was zero before, it's now gonna be one. If it was three before, it's now gonna be four, all right? And there's one more thing we have to do. We have to then reset the current guess because once they've had a guess, we wanna clear out that current guess so they can start again on a new row with a blank slate with a new guess. So we'll say set current guess and that's gonna be an empty string. And the order matters here because remember, we're using the current guess right here. So make sure you do this at the end, okay? So that's pretty much everything we need to do inside this function for now. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to output the guesses inside the Wordle component. So let's grab them here. I'm gonna say guesses, we want them. And remember, we can do that because we return them down here. So this is the array of guesses where each guess is an array of letter objects. We're grabbing that now from the use Wordle hook. And actually, I also want to grab as well the is correct value, that bit of state. Remember, that becomes true when there's a match between the solution word and the current guess. And then also we'll take the turn as well. So we're grabbing all of those things from the use Wordle hook. Now, what I'd like to do is output them in this component every time there's a change to one of them, just so we can track them in the console as we're having guesses for now. So let's use another use effect hook and pass in a function which is gonna fire inside this hook. And all I'm gonna do is console.log each time there's a change in one of those values, all three of them. So I'll log the guesses and then I'll log the turn and then finally is correct, which is just a Boolean. Now we need to pass in those as dependencies to this use effect so that it reruns the function anytime one of those dependencies change. So I'm gonna say guesses is the first one, then turn, and then is correct. All right, so now let's preview this in a browser. Okay then, so if you refresh to begin with, we get a solution word, which is pools. And to begin with, we're logging those three initial values out. So we can see this is the 
current guesses at the minute where each one is undefined because we've made no guesses yet. Then after that, we have zero, which is the turn, and then false because we've not won the game yet. Now, if I make a guess, I'm going to say something like plays and press enter. Now, notice, first of all, we see this down here. So, and by the way, we get it logged twice. And the reason we get it logged twice is because first of all, there's a change to this value, which triggers the use effect function. And then there's a change to this value, which triggers it again. So they log out twice. But anyway, the second time we have this array right here with the first spot now taken up as a guess array. So if we open that up, we can see this guess array is plays. There's the word. And here are the matches. So green for the first one, which was P. That makes sense and then yellow for the L because it was in the word but in the wrong position. And then we get gray and gray for A and Y and then green for S because it ends in an S, all right? So that's the data we have. If we make another guess, I'm just gonna say, I don't know, pools, we'll get it correct and press enter. We can see now that this is true. So it's got up a turn and this is also true because is correct is now true. The guess word matches the solution word. And also we can see now we've taken up the next slot in the guesses array with the formatted guess. So the first one is still there, that's plays. And the second one down here is pools and they're all green. So this is all working pretty nicely. We now have pretty much all the data we need and all the logic we need to take this data, these guesses and start outputting them to a grid on the screen. So. In the next lesson, what we're going to do is start creating that game grid so we can do that.